Can I tell you why there was a shift and a change from the kingdom of Saul to the kingdom of David? And, and most of you will miss this. It wasn't, it wasn't just because Saul disobeyed God and kept some of the cows and the lambs and didn't spare to God the king. It wasn't just because he did that in disobedience. Who in here, while you're saved, is still disobeying God? Yeah. Wow. I'm just going to pretend like I saw all your hands go up. <laughs> because we all walk in, in moments of disobedience. We all have things where we disobey. Maybe we don't even realize we're doing it, but we're out of the will of God and out of the divine purpose of God that's disobedient. The reason that there was a transition from the kingdom of Saul to the kingdom of David is this. The kingdom of Saul represents the spirit of control and pride. God, you said, but I'm going to do it my way. Come on. God, you said to do all this and that. But the people are saying this. And here, God, I'm going to decide that I'm going to be in control of the destiny of this kingdom. Therefore, I'm going to disregard what you told me to do through the prophet. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do what the people want. Where King David was just the opposite. David wasn't about doing what the people wanted or what he wanted. King David was about doing what God wanted. Yeah. David's kingdom was transitioned into manifestation and Saul's was relieved because one represented God, I'm in control, and the other one represented God, you're in control. If the kingdom of God is going to come and be effective in our communities, first and foremost, we've got to let God have control of our life. Yes. It's that simple. Yes. The kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven is the invasion of God's kingdom into ours. Our awareness of it depends on the condition of our heart. The condition of our heart has to be good soil where there has to be evidence of fruit. And once that move starts, we've got to be very careful to make sure that we aren't letting other things in that will slowly wear us down and steal away our affection from God. Yes. First and foremost, that spirit of Saul, that, that pride in self-control. Probably the greatest detriment to most churches in this area is the need for the pastor whoever's in, in, in charge of leading to be in control of the service. To be in control of what happens in the ministries of those under him. I come in here Sunday in and Sunday out and oftentimes I'll just sit back and watch the ministry team, the worship team, the, the children's church and everybody I give them an opportunity to let God lead them and do what he wants them to do. Every now and then I'll step in and I'll say something or even if need be bring correction. But one of the things I've discovered is that if I let God have his way in their lives and in their ministries, he has a way of working it out better than I could. Saul held on to his pride and the need to be in control where David walked out following God and let God be in control. As I said earlier, these are not days for more church. We don't need another church service. We don't need another night of church. We don't even need another night of praying. But we need a more Holy Spirit in our lives. More of the kingdom of God. Think about this for just a second. Let's say in order to become closer to God, we start having church on Monday, and praying on Tuesday, Bible study on Wednesday, youth group on Thursday, men's ministry on Saturday, watching the Lord's on Friday night, and we start doing all these things, and we get real, real busy, we get real busy, we, we, we fill church in every day of our lives, every, not every, every moment is full of church, does that bring us to a place of success in the kingdom of God? Absolutely not. Is church not important then? That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is all those things cannot replace the kingdom of God in your life. Yes. Right. They cannot become substitutes and that's what they eventually become for most. Cheap substitutes to the kingdom of God. This is why we can come and go and pick and choose what church service we want to attend. I don't feel like driving to paradise tonight. I'm not going to go. I don't feel like coming out Sunday morning. Time change. I'm just going to skip church. I'm mad at so-and-so. I'm upset with the pastor. Worship's too long. He preaches too long. I don't have the right clothes. That's why churches can be so convenient. 
And that's why it can be devastating sometimes to a move of God. Because if it replaces the kingdom of God, it has just taken on a, a purpose that it was never intended. Yes. We don't need more church. Let me say it this way. Better that, brother. We need more of the kingdom of God in our personal lives. Yes. Come on. I promise you, if we get more of the kingdom of God, we're going to have more church. Yes. Because we're going to want to get together yes. and brag about what God is doing. Yes. When we reverse it. Yes. And, and we, 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 we invert that. And we, we try to get together more to create. God's not going to step into something that's half-hearted. And you might have every intention to do right. But if we, like Samson, have these little disobediences, come on. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of God is different than what we've ever thought it to be. The cross is merciful and full of grace to get us into heaven and to bring salvation. But the kingdom of God to come on this earth, yes. we're going to have to look at things differently.